Hey guys, today what we're going to be doing is looking at the Pythagorean Theorem. So first off, what is the Pythagorean Theorem? The Pythagorean Theorem is an equation to find a missing side of a right triangle. So if here's my triangle, let me turn it into a right triangle really quickly. We use it to find missing sides, and we label these as A, B, and C. Now A and B can flip spots, but the most important thing is the hypotenuse is the longest side. It is always across from the 90 degree angle. So this right here is my hypotenuse. It's always C. So the formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now we're going to use this formula to find missing sides of a right triangle. So it says directions. Find the missing value using the Pythagorean theorem. Leave your answer in simplest radical form. So it says no decimals essentially is what it's saying. We just want radicals. So let's go ahead and look at this now. Um, first thing I need to do is label my sides. Now remember across from the right angle is my uh, hypotenuse which is always my C. And my B is labeled and this is A. So what this is going to look like is radical 23 squared plus b squared equals 6 squared. Now I got this equation by just plugging it into a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So now look at this, radical 23 to the second power is just 23 plus b squared is equal to 36. I'm now going to subtract 23 on both sides to get b squared is equal to 13. Now in order to get b all by itself, I take the square root of both sides and I will get b equals radical 13. This uh, 13 is prime, so I cannot simplify this anymore. So this b value is just radical 13. Now looking at this one, the triangle is a little flip, but same idea. Across from the 90 degree angle is my c squared, so this is c. Um, and I'll just say this is my a value of 0.4, which means I'm solving for my x, which is my b value. So this would look like 0.4 to the second power plus b squared is equal to 0.41 to the second power. So when I do this, I'm going to get 0.16 plus b squared is equal to, and let me put 0.41 into my calculator really quickly, um, 1681. So then all I'm going to do is subtract 16 hundredths on both sides. And if I subtract 16 hundredths, I'm going to get b squared is equal to 81 thousandths. So then all I'm going to do now, um, excuse me, 100,000, 81 ten thousandths. All I'm going to do now is take the square root on both sides, and I'm going to get an answer of b equals 9 hundredths, so 0 0.09. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the next one. This one's in fractions, same idea. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and label these. Remember, most important thing, across from the 90 degree angle is always your C. Uh, this is labeled as B, so I'll label this as A. So I'm going to plug in everything in the Pythagorean theorem, which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this would look like then 2 fifths to the second power plus B squared is equal to 9 tenths to the second power. I'm going to distribute this to the top and the bottom. So 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 5 is 25 plus b squared, and then 9 times 9 is 81, and 10 times 10 is 100. So then what I'm going to do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4 to get 16 over 100, plus b squared is equal to 81 over 100. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 16 hundredths on both sides. And if I do 81 minus 16, I am going to get 65 over 100 is equal to b squared. All right, so I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so I have more room. So if I have 65 over 100 equals b squared, all I need to do is take the square root of uh, both sides. And when I take the square root of a fraction, you have to do it to the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to have the square root of 65 all over the square root of 10 is 100. So now I see, uh, excuse me, I take that back, it is 10. Uh, so now I look at the square root of 65 and I look at two numbers that multiply to 65. So 65 divided by 5 is 13. So since 13 and 5 are both prime and I don't have any pairs, this would be my final answer for my b value. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at this one. It says, 
you are locked out of your house. You can see that there's a window on the second floor that is open, and you plan to ask your neighbor for a ladder long enough to reach the window. The window is 20 feet off the ground, and there's a vegetable garden below the window that extends 10 feet from the ground of the house, and you cannot put the ladder in the vegetable garden. What size should the ladder be? So what this is saying is you have a house. Here's our house. And you have a window right here. And the distance right here is 20 feet. Then you have a gardening box. We'll label this in green. We have a gardening box right here. And this is 10 feet long. And it's saying you're going to have this ladder, which I'm going to label with this line. And we'll do that in red. We're trying to put a ladder from here to here. And it's saying, how long is that ladder? Well, if you see this, I'm going to pull out a triangle really quickly of all this. Uh, let me highlight it first. If this is a side, this is a side, and this is a side, here is your right triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this really quickly. And then we're going to label the sides and then solve it. So if this is the height of the house, it says it's 20 feet high. This is the garden, which was 10 feet. How long is this? So all I'm going to do is plug these in, and it's going to be 20, 20 squared plus 10 squared equals x squared, or c squared. So this is going to be 400 plus 100 equals x squared, which means 500 equals x squared, which means uh, it would be, I would need to take the square root of both sides, and I would have x equals the square root of 500. So now I'm going to break this down. This is 10 times 50. This is um, 10 times 5. And then I have my pair of 5s. So then I would have 10 radical 5. So 10 radical 5 feet. All right, guys, I hope this video was able to help you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or your teacher.